This is the hour, Mike. A lot of people want to hear what you're about to say. Let me start by thanking you for joining us on NFM TV. Oh, thanks for having me. The last time we sat and talked was July 15th, 2021. So about 14, 15 months ago, we were in this debate. Inflation, transitory or here to stay? And it just so happens when we were talking at that exact moment, Chairman Powell was talking to Congress and pleading his case that it was transitory at the time, meaning it was not here to stay for the long haul. At that time, this was your position. I have to admit, I, I think I'm on the other side of this debate. I, I think that these higher prices and inflation pressures are likely to stick around. You certainly were on the right side of that trade. When are we going to see these rates start to pull back and relax? Our forecast is that by the end of this year, we'll be back below six. Uh, we're saying five and a half, and we think it'll drift lower from there. Here's how I think about it. Start with the 10-year Treasury rate. The 10-year Treasury rate should reflect average economic growth over the next 10 years plus inflation, right? So the 10-year Treasury rate really should be in the 25 to 3% range. We're close to 4% right now. Unless something radically changes in terms of inflation not being elevated for a year or two, if now investors begin to think it's going to be around for five or 10 years, we'll stay at these higher levels. If not, 10 year falls back to between two and a half and three. If I get the timing right, absolutely, that's, that's incredibly difficult, but I think directionally it's right. We're going to come back to a sort of a five to five and a half percent rate. I think it's going to be a long time before we're back to a 3% rate again, but the six and a half to seven, I don't think is sustainable either. Why should anybody trust Chairman Powell? And I know you don't want to take a shot at the guy, but he's been wrong. And now suddenly he's steering this ship once again, and we're seeing the reverberations through all markets. So I give the folks at the Fed credit for what they're trying to do. I, I agree. They, they misjudge this one. You're starting to hear more Fed officials concerned that they're going too far too fast. From the perspective of our industry, in terms of you're thinking about production, if they push rates up too far too fast, we get a recession, rates are going to drop further than what's in my forecast, right? So from a, from a pure rate perspective, from a 30-year mortgage rate perspective, if they're wrong by hiking too much, rates will drop more than even we're forecasting. And on 831, fixed rates were at 599. You fast forward to yesterday, you're approaching 7%. Did you even see that coming? I didn't. Again, it's the, the magnitude of the shocks. And then I think in our last conversation, we talked about the Fed balance sheet, right? So not only are they pushing short rates up, but they're also allowing their holdings of treasuries and MBS to run off. I don't know that that's having a huge impact on the level of rates, but boy, is it amplifying volatility in the market. It almost feels like we've never felt this before, but we've had these periods of time, several other moments in the 25 years I've been in the industry, and I know you've been in it just as long. Is this really different? To me, this honestly feels a whole lot like where we were in 2000, where uh, we went from sort of the, the dot-com craziness in the late 90s to just a sudden halt in 2000. You know, rates jumped from 6% to 8%. And all of a sudden, I was at Fannie Mae at the time. Everyone's sort of looking around like, what do we do now? There's nothing happening, right? It's, it's so disconcerting. And then something else occurs and, you know, markets open up again. You've got these inroads to the Fed, I'm sure, and these other uh, outfits around the government. How closely do they look at the housing sector? Like, is this the tell for them or is this just one of many ingredients? They certainly watch it very, very closely. So we have conversations with staff and, and leadership over there on a pretty regular basis, as do some of our counterparts at the home builders and the realtors and, and other market participants. And, you know, historically, it absolutely has been true that the housing sector tends to be a good leading indicator for the rest of the economy, whether you're going up or whether you're coming down. When people make that decision to go ahead and buy a house, you know, multiple times their annual income, they, they got to be pretty confident in, in what lies ahead. So it's, it's a good indicator. And then when they get in that house, they tend to fill it up with furniture and appliances and everything that goes along with it. So lots of other sectors track housing pretty closely as a, a very, very 
efficient leading indicator of activity. Are we in a recession right now? Not yet. Um, I, I'm increasingly worried that by early next year, we will be. Uh, watch the job numbers. That, that's really the, the metric. That's a good real-time indicator of where we are. Lastly, Mike, can you just give us a minute on renting versus owning right now? We have a shortage of housing units in this country. We have a shortage of rental units and a shortage of homes for sale. So rents have been going up double digits in most markets in the country. Uh, that, that's really not going to change. And one of the real benefits of buying a house is that you locked in your housing costs. You're not going to be subject to another double digit increase in rent. So I think there's an argument to be made in many markets around the country that buying still is your best option. Uh, and keep in mind that in the US mortgage system, you get a 30 year fixed rate at six and a half percent, you got the option at any time going forward if rates were to drop to refinance. So yet you're capping your cost, but you're not locking in at that. Amazing. Well, Mike, thank you so very much. It was great to see your office yesterday. I can't believe you didn't have one single paper on your desk. That was amazing. You told me everything's paperless now. So I know you know what you're doing and really appreciate your time so much. And I know the whole mortgage community does. And we're getting this out to everybody to, to hear what you have to say. Certainly when you talk, people definitely listen. Mike Fratt and Tony, Chief Economist at the NBA, thank you so much for being with us. And we'll talk to you real soon. Thank you. I'm Greg Scher from NFM TV. We hope you've enjoyed this. We'll talk to you soon.